Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., home of quirky insights of Hollywood actors, this is Ballot. First up, we'll dive into the latest CNN poll that shows Donald Trump maintaining his lead over President Joe Biden, despite the former president's ongoing legal troubles. We'll also take a closer look at Alan Lichtman, the Nostradamus of U.S. presidential elections, and his famous 13 keys to the White House. It looks like the 2024 presidential race is heating up. And according to a new CNN poll, Donald Trump is holding steady with a lead over President Joe Biden. That's right. The man who's currently on trial for allegedly paying hush money to a porn star is still the front runner. I guess when it comes to politics, sometimes crime does pay. But here's the real kicker. The poll shows that most Americans now see Trump's presidency as a success, while a majority view Biden's as a failure. It's like the American public has collective amnesia about the chaos and controversy that defined the Trump era. I mean, sure, he didn't start any new wars, but he did incite an insurrection at the Capitol. But hey, who's counting? Interestingly, Republicans are more unified in their belief that Trump's presidency was a success than Democrats are about Biden's. A whopping 92% of Republicans call Trump's time in office a success, while only 73% of Democrats say the same about Biden. I guess when it comes to party loyalty, the GOP has the Democrats beat. And let's not forget about the independents. A slim majority of them, 51%, say Trump's presidency was successful, while only 37% see Biden's as a success. It's like they're saying, sure, Trump may have been a bit of a wild card, but at least he kept things interesting. But here's the real head-scratcher. 14% of Americans say they consider both Trump and Biden to be failures, while 8% say both are successes. Talk about a case of political schizophrenia. I guess some people just can't make up their minds. As for Biden's approval ratings, they're about as popular as a skunk at a garden party. A solid 60% disapprove of his handling of the job, while only 40% approve. And even on his strongest issues, like healthcare policy and student loan debt, he's still in negative territory. But his worst issue? The war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza, where he's got a measly 28% approval rating. I guess when it comes to Middle East conflicts, Biden's not exactly the great peacemaker. So what does all this mean for the 2024 race? Well, it's still early, and a lot can change between now and Election Day. But one thing's for sure. If Trump manages to beat his criminal charges and win back the White House, he'll have pulled off the greatest political comeback since Nixon. And if Biden manages to turn things around and secure a second term, well, that'll be a miracle on par with the parting of the Red Sea. And he was around to see that one firsthand. Let me introduce you to the man who's been giving pollsters and pundits sleepless nights for decades. Alan Lichtman, the Nostradamus of U.S. presidential elections. This guy has correctly predicted the outcome of nine out of the last ten elections using his famous 13 keys to the White House. And now, he's gearing up for his greatest challenge yet. Biden versus Trump, the sequel. But before we dive into Lichtman's crystal ball, Let's take a moment to appreciate the man himself. He's not just a history professor. He's a former North American 3,000-meter steeplechase champion who, at 77, is still aiming to compete in the next Senior Olympics. And let's not forget his appearance on the TV quiz show, Tic-Tac-Doe, where he won a cool 110,000 doors in cash and prizes. Talk about a renaissance man. Now back to those 13 keys. Lichtman developed them back in 1981, with the help of a Russian earthquake prediction expert. That's right, folks. The secret to predicting U.S. elections lies in seismology. Who knew? The keys cover everything from the state of the economy to foreign policy successes and failures, and even the charisma of the candidates. And they've been scarily accurate over the years, much to the chagrin of the professional forecasting community. But what about that one miss in 2000, you ask? Well, according to Lichtman, that wasn't a miss at all. He maintains that the election was stolen from Al Gore, and he's got the receipts to prove it. One out of every nine to ten ballots cast by a black voter was thrown out, compared to just one out of fifty for white voters. Coincidence? Lichtman thinks not. So, what does the professor have to say about 2024? Well, he's not ready to make his official prediction just yet. But he does note that Biden already has two keys in his favor. Incumbency, and a lack of serious primary challengers. 
That means Trump would need six more keys to fall his way to secure a victory. And with the specter of a criminal conviction looming over the former president's head, that's looking like an increasingly tall order. Let's dive a little deeper into Alan Lichtman's 13 keys to the White House. These are the factors that he says can make or break a presidential candidate's chances of winning the big prize. First up, we've got the party mandate. Basically, if the incumbent party holds more seats in the House after the midterms than they did before, that's a good sign for them. But if they lose ground, well, let's just say they might want to start updating their resumes. Next, there's the contest key. If there's no serious challenge to the incumbent party's nomination, that's a point in their favor. But if there's a knockdown dragout drag-out primary fight, it could spell trouble in November. Of course, having the sitting president as your candidate is always a plus, as is the absence of a significant third party or independent campaign. And let's not forget the economy. If we're not in a recession and people are feeling good about their wallets, that's a big win for the incumbent. But it's not all about the money, honey. Lichtman also looks at things like major policy changes, social unrest, and scandals. If the incumbent administration is rocking the boat too much or getting caught with their hands in the cookie jar, that could be a red flag. And let's not forget about foreign policy. A big win on the world stage can be a game changer, but a major failure could be the kiss of death. Just ask Jimmy Carter how that whole Iran hostage crisis thing worked out for him. Finally, there's the charisma factor. If the incumbent party's candidate is a real charmer or a national hero, that's a point in their favor. But if the challenger is the one with the magnetic personality, watch out. But here's the thing. Even with all these factors in play, there's always the possibility of a black swan event that could throw everything into chaos. I mean, who could have predicted a global pandemic or an attempted insurrection at the Capitol? So while Lichtman's track record is impressive, even he admits that nothing is perfect in the human world. But hey, if he does end up being wrong this time around, at least he can always fall back on his tic-tac-toe winnings. $110,000 can buy a lot of humble pie. Nick Offerman, the actor who played the president in Civil War, has some strong opinions about the current state of American politics. In a recent interview with the Washington Post, Offerman started off by saying he wants to provide support for good government and that he's astonished by the incredibly good job Biden and Harris have quietly been doing. But then, he decided to take things up a notch. Offerman posed a question that I'm sure has been on everyone's mind. Trump versus Biden, would you rather have a pile of dog crap or a loaf of bread? I mean, when you put it that way, it seems like a pretty easy choice, right? Offerman acknowledged that his colorful comparison might not be the most helpful thing to say. He even expressed a desire to be friends with Trump supporters, saying, You guys seem decent in every other way. But here's the kicker. He thinks that a lot of the information they're receiving is like being told, Oh, it's not dog crap, it's pumpernickel. He's made it clear that in the battle between Trump and Biden, he's team bred all the way. But to all the dog crap lovers out there, don't worry. Offerman still wants to be your friend. Just don't try to pass off any pumpernickel at your next dinner party. He even wrote a song called, I Thought I Was a Man But I Was Wrong. The material wrote itself. I just said, I mean, I can't write a better joke than Ben Shapiro questioning my masculinity. Portions of today's podcast may have been created with the help of AI, but would an AI serve you dog crap and tell you it's bread? Probably not. Except that Terminator guy, he's a jerk.